give Him praise this morning. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Everybody good this morning? Come on, you're better than that. Everybody good this morning? Yeah. Hey, we just call this family day. It's family day at the church today. and We're excited. In fact, I hope that you won't leave. We've got big lunch plans. We've got a silent auction. No, we're going to do a live auction. I'm sorry. We're going to do a silent auction and a live auction for all of our children. They're boxed up over here on the front. J-Kids over here. Come on in the house. Get up the J-Kids in the house. Hey, um, here's the deal. We're going to raise enough money. Our goal is, and we're going to make the goal. We're going to raise enough money. If any, if any of the kids want to go to camp, we're going to send them to summer camp, right? Right. That's what we're going to do. We'll do that today, all right? And we got graduates coming up in a moment, and we've got Bible drill, folks. I mean, we are loaded with a lot of fun today. So we are so, so super glad that you are here to be a part of this. And everything we do this morning is going to be based on the cross because our children have been doing uh, projects for weeks and weeks, and everything they did was built around the cross. And so that's what we'll be sharing this morning. And I hope that you've uh, picked, I think you picked an absolute excellent Sunday to be here to be involved with all of our families. Don't leave, don't go anywhere. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. And then I think, uh, I think Casey's going to come up and help me. I think Miss Denise is coming up. And we're going to recognize some graduates. That's where we're going to start. Let's pray together right now. Just with heads bowed and eyes closed. And let's just give the Lord praise this morning as we thank him for all of his goodness and greatness. Heavenly Father, as we stand in your presence this day, we are careful with these lips to give praise to Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. You are so, so good to us, and we are not deserving of it. It's because of your wonderful grace and love that you extend towards us. So thankful that grace is not man's idea, but it's your provincial idea of giving back to us because you love us. Now this day, we're so happy to be able to be with our children and our graduates and our Bible drill and families and guests and friends that have come to celebrate together here this uh, beginning almost of summer of 2023. I pray that this would be a great day that as we share about the cross, that our lives will forevermore be changed from this day forward in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Come on, let's give him praise real quick. Everybody in the house, give him praise. Amen. And you may be seated this morning. All right. So uh, it's graduate day, Miss. You, this is your, about your favorite day of the year. I love graduate Sunday. We I know get to you do. honor our students. They've accomplished so much, and we just get to brag on them. You know what's cool about this is that some of these students, as is the case every year, have been products of people that have prayed over them, have given to them, have taught them. Some of them all all the days of their life, and we see that all the way from our J kids all the way up. And I know that's why I'm so happy. About it's a product of our church family. Yeah, really They're a is. product. So it's an honor and a privilege today to recognize these graduates and all of their accomplishments, all of their awards, and all of their plans for the days ahead. And so I have the privilege to announce our first two graduates. Uh, the first graduate is Timber Ann Jeffcoat. Come on, Timber Ann. Come on up. Timber Ann is the daughter of Barry and Melissa Jeffcoat and graduated with highest honors from Parkland Academy. She's an administrator scholar, Mississippi scholar, and a Mississippi eminent scholar. And uh, she's a member of the Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, the ACT 25 Club, whoop, whoop, that's awesome, Diamond Girls Garden Club, and was voted Park Lane's Prom Princess. A wow. six-year member of Park Lane's Cheer Squad, Timber Ann is also a two-time All-American cheerleader. Uh, her service work includes Camp Sunshine Counselor, Miracle Lead Bucket Buddy, a member of the Crown Club, and a recent award recipient for outstanding service in the Pike County Macomb area. And last summer, she served on a missions trip to Honduras and staffed the Happening of Mississippi. Do y'all remember the big purple wave in the house? She was part of that movement, very beautiful, led in that, and I'm just so, so proud of her. Uh, Timber Ann plans to attend Mississippi State University, major in kinesiology and having received an academic excellent scholarship, a Colvard Future Leader Scholarship and the Mississippi Eminent Scholars Grant, her future plans are to become an occupational therapist. Wow. Put your hands together yeah. for Timber Ann. 
Our next graduate is running late, but she's going to scoot in. But I'm going to go ahead and recognize her. Her name is Anastasia Bates. Anastasia is the daughter of Mildred Bates. She graduated from North Pike High School just past Friday. And Anastasia is passionate for music. She'll be attending Southwest Mississippi Community College this fall, where she received a full scholarship majoring in music and cosmetology. Archery is her second passion, which she realized she loved during Century Kid Camp. Wow. Amen. Isn't that awesome? There you go. This year, North Pike's ar archery team won the South State Championship. Anastasia's dream is to become a band director. Band has been her inspiration since the sixth grade. And so a big shout out goes to her mentors, Mr. Bolaware and Mr. Weaver, who made her keep her head up and told her never to give up. After Southwest, she plans on attending William Carey University to uh, complete her music degree. Anastasia Bates. Amen. You're always hiding in the kit back there. We, we, we're glad to see what you look like. That's right. <laughs> I get the privilege to uh, recognize our guys this morning, and uh, I'm just proud to do that. They both know it. So first, um, let's call it Tide This and Tell. So y'all get around the call. Ty is the son of Tony and Dawn Desitel. His faith and family are very important to him. He was baptized here at First Baptist Macomb at the age of 10. Ty is a homeschool graduate as of May 13th and is an accomplished athlete in multiple sports, soccer, <laughs> basketball, baseball, and powerlifting. By the, by the way, we don't recommend any of this. We don't take any responsibility for right. putting your children in a washing machine, okay? We just uh, want to go ahead and do the, the, the little uh, Nobody tag at these and that will make sure, right. you know. <laughs> so this, um, after graduating, he plans to attend Southwest Community College, Go Bear Tech, in the fall, concentrating on sports medicine and physical training certifications. Ty also plans to build a business for performance and strength training for young athletes and adults. He believes hard work and determination are essential to achieving success. For his senior quote, Ty chose, if you don't believe you are the best, then you will never achieve all that you are capable of. So I told Ty, he's, he's like me, he doesn't like to talk in front of a large groups, so I asked him to naturally prepare a speech for us. And um, he said, maybe next time, so we'll, we'll work on that. Ty, we're proud of you. I'll give it up for Ty. Now we want to recognize Jackson Blaine Griffin. If you'll make your way. Good morning. 18 year old Blaine Griffin is the son of Candace Polk and Billy Griffin and stepmother Robin Griffin. This past Thursday, May 17th, Blaine graduated from Central High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Blaine grew up in Macomb, attending North Pike through middle school. There he participated in football, soccer, and choir. He also played baseball with the local youth sports league. Blaine was a faithful member of First Baptist Macomb where living here and enjoyed, while living here and enjoyed upward basketball, VBS, and Sunday school. He could be seen running all over the grounds, greeting everyone he could, and it was a blessing for his family to see that he loved his church so much. Blaine was also blessed to be a part of South Macomb Baptist Church where he was also involved in choir, BBS, and other activities. At Central High School, Blaine was on the football team for four years, as well as the track team for two years. Blaine's plans for the future are to attend Baton Rouge Community College, majoring in welding. He will be celebrating his birthday this Friday, May 26. Blaine wishes to thank the whole church for their prayers and everything you've done through him for his cancer journey, through his cancer journey. He asks that you continue to lift him up as he fights, as his fight continues. Blaine is proud to stand on the stage with his fellow graduates and wishes them all the best as they enter, this inciting, enter into this exciting stage of their lives. And Blaine, we just want to say you're the definition of perseverance and you inspire us. <laughs>
Y'all hang in there just for a minute. Aren't you glad and proud to have these outstanding young men and women? Why don't you just remain standing? Let's, let's just remain standing. Aren't you proud and, of, about these outstanding graduates, these men and women that are going to do, they already have, but they're going to continue to do great things for God. They're fearfully and wonderfully made, and we're so honored to be able to, to, be able to stand them before you today and to be able to honor them and their family members today. Let's give it up for the family members that are here to support their children, grandchildren. Why don't we do this? You know, I'd like to get off the cuff a little bit. Why don't we take a couple of guys and come up and uh, let's just lay a hand on uh, these men and a couple of ladies, if you'd come up with Timber Ann. Come on up and let's just, let's pray over them today. I'm gonna pray for them, but I'd just like people to pray for, over them and ask God to bless them. And, Come up, get around some of these guys and bless them. And that's just biblical. It's just a biblical thing. We just pray over people. Glad y'all are coming. Anybody wants to come, come on. That's what church families do. We pray over people and ask God's blessing and favor. Now, if you're still remaining in the audience today, which obviously most of you are, if you just want to just extend a hand towards them or you just want to pray right where you are, I'm just going to just ask God's richest blessing and favor over these outstanding men and women. Would you pray with us today? Say something like this. Dear Jesus, we are so grateful to come into your presence with thanksgiving in our heart. And today for these, uh, they were our boys and girls that are now young men and women. I pray God your richest blessing and favor. God, I start with these ladies. I thank you for their vast accomplishments. What a, uh, what a sheet of things that they've already done in their young lives. Wow, we are so blessed to be able to have such women in front of us today. We ask that you bless them, always give them a godly presence. I pray as they, wherever they are, but whatever they're doing in school and degrees or one day in careers or marriage or parenting, whatever it is, this very day, there is another level of anointing that falls on their life. I pray for the glow of Jesus Christ to always be in their life like it is now. And for these young men, I thank you, Lord, for whatever has come their way. We've heard about perseverance, but we also hear about personality. And I pray, God, that you take these two men and others like them and that you continue to make bold, strong, outstanding men in our country. I ask that your favor be upon them as they're learning and as they're challenged. I pray they will not falter, but you will boldly prop them up in everything that is, is, is before them, whether, whether it's a classroom or whether it's a career. I pray, God, that your hand and strength and, and prosperity will be on their lives. May you richly bless these graduates, all of them, every family member, and may together we see your hand of mercy, strength, and uh, power and authority. And we ask all of this now together in Jesus' name. And somebody said... Amen. Give him praise this morning. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Amen and amen. Hey, hey, there we go. All right. Thank y'all. Well, not only that, do we have some... Uh, Miss Denise, I'm going to ask you to stay up here with me, if you will. We've got Bible drill, folks, as well. Yeah, grab, her, grab a microphone there and help me with this. You don't need any rehearsal to take a microphone. <laughs> So we may not understand a little bit, we're just since we're going to take time this morning, right? we may not understand, uh, Bible drill's been around a long time, yes. where ba basically young people and children are learning and memorizing scripture, right? Yep. and then it has to be called to their memory, and man, I mean, they got to be sharp yes. and quick and fast. Absolutely, they got, to, yeah. they got to take their Bible in their hand, yep. uh, and they're directed to find certain passages in the Bible, so they work on this and work on this day in and day out flipping to those passages and so it's a wonderful way of hiding God's word in their heart. I'm going to tell you they're going to remember these passages of scripture uh, during their adult years when they're going through a hard time and that word is going to bubble up in their spirit. And we've got so, leaders that invest yes. every year in them and never stop and we're very grateful for these ladies that consistently yes. give their time to try to help uh, young people hide the word in their heart and we are very we want you to know today as a church family how blessed we are and how thankful we are for you this yes thank you. thank you amen all right, all right so, so we got a list here we'll yes. start with um alexandra beasley okay where's alexandra, Is alexandra here mm -hmm. there she comes yes. and we have a gift yes. for each one of our students 
what we have. We have Diamond Dykes. Come on, Diamond. Who's Diamond? There, there they are. Comes. Look at their shirts. There Don't they go. have amazing shirts? They're I all love their up, shirts. Looking good. All right. Well, we're just as well to stay in that category. Yes, and we, we have, have Raven, Raven Dykes. Dykes. All Come right. on, Miss Raven. Come on, they Ms. have Raven. worked hard. And then we also have uh, Seth Russell. He's not here today. And Joshua, Joshua Hartz. Hartz. And I um, think we have them up on the screen. Yes, There's they are Seth. juniors this year. We'll be seniors next year. And we are so proud of them. Man, with busy schedules and lots of things to do, they had made Bible drill a priority. And we can see it in their lives. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Aren't you excited this morning for these, uh, we say boys and girls, boys and girls, young men and women, leadership. Father, bless them today. Thank you for their ability, but thank you more for their availability to be able to ask you to bless them, continue to bless them. And I pray the word that's been hidden in their heart will always be such a strong evidence of your love for them, and you'll use it in their lives in every chapter. In Jesus' name, and one more time, let's give him praise this morning. Amen? Everybody ready to worship? Come on, we're going to, and by the way, we're going to do a little crawl. We're going to walk our way through the cross this morning, all right? Let's stand to your feet this morning. Come on, uh, Pastor Brian, let's, uh, let's worship again. Sing this out together. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever we live for you. Sing out, Jesus. Jesus, the name above.
lift this up together. I will build my life. So I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you alone and I God, we ask that you would just come meet with us right here and now, right in this moment as we surrender to you. God, set our heart upon you, set our mind upon you. Let us recognize who we are serving this morning with our voices, with our heads pointed to you, with our mind pointed to you. It takes a conscious effort to surrender to him. So whatever it is this morning you need to lay at his feet, Bring that to the forefront of your mind and bow humbly before Him. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. Oh, and I will ever love and trust.
Kids, join us for this last song in worship. We're going to sing Waymaker together. I encourage you guys to lift your voices. Sing out to him.
Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. you glad that our children are learning that kind of message in their life. Amen. Give it up for all our J kids, everybody this morning. Thank y'all so much. High five somebody to the left or the right. Make them feel welcome. Glad that you're here for family day here at first. And then you can be seated. We're going to have a great time this morning in the word. And then we'll have a great lunch together as well. Good morning, everybody. Everybody good? Everybody having fun so far? So good? Come on, Bradley, I'm waiting on you. You know, mess with the crowd, right? Several weeks ago, Rebecca and I uh, went upstairs and she was beginning to show me um, all of the particular items that our children were making uh, for this day. In fact, we were trying to prepare to get ready to go to children's camp and make sure that, you know, every kid, every kid can't afford. And hey, we know everybody's on a tight budget, but. You know, you're very generous people, and we decided that today we would center in uh, on what they had been learning all spring long or a little longer. And every particular item that you'll see in a few moments was all built around the cross, all of them. And so uh, you'll get the opportunity, um, and you may want to take something home with you today. Uh, we'll get to that later on. But that brought me to the, uh, to the message idea in this Sojourner series. And I was thinking then uh, uh, about... What they were saying to us was that it was all about the cross. This is all about the cross. This morning I want to talk to you about the travel as a sojourner. I want to talk to you about the travel of the cross. Now before we get there, think with me just for a moment. Think about this. For over 2,000 years, now people wear, in fact, I probably could go through the line here uh, of some of the seats and probably could do it online. How many of you have a cross on, a ring, uh, you got something around your neck, somebody got a cross. I see hands everywhere. People still got cross on. Think about this, this item of jewelry, who would wear that item just because they picked that out of a book? They just said, if it wasn't something significant, why would you pick that and, and continue to memorialize it? Who would do that? And the answer is nobody. Nobody would pick the significance of this thing. No, nobody would, would write songs consistently now, but continue to write songs about the cross or poems about the cross. Or nobody would do artwork about the cross. They, they would go on to something else because that's what people do. People move on to the latest, greatest thing. Let me give you an idea. Just think about the things that most of us in this room, we don't even, we don't even think about it anymore. We, we, it's gone. It's past us. Uh, this week, Cindy and I decided we wanted a little snack. So we went into one of the wing outlets, and when we walked in, we we're always singing and stuff wherever we go, and we were singing. In fact, anybody watch American Idol? Anybody watch American Idol? All right, so I've so got a few American Idol fans in there, and uh, so, you know, we're always watching. One of the, one of the guests, that's the ju one of the judges, is a guy named Lionel Richie. Anybody remember him? Huh? Anybody? Come on, you got to help me, because the illustration won't do any good. Okay, so you know who he is. So we were sitting there, we were walking in, and we were singing a little Lionel. Um, I don't remember what we were singing, but we were singing one of Lionel's hits, and he's got a bunch of them. Now you think, this guy's a Grammy Award winner, all kinds of platinum, and all kinds of records, right? So millions and millions of, of pieces. This particular song that we were singing, uh, it, it, he'd probably sold oh, several million. And as we're standing sort of in line, a uh, young African-American uh, guy was standing there behind the counter, and he's gonna serve us our wing dinner, and uh, he, Cindy said, you know that song? And he said, nope, not a clue. Here's a song, and, and I could tell you thousands of times of, of different people that I could name from 1980 or 1990 or 1970. And some of you wouldn't have any idea about the song, yet it was a hit of all hits. Let me just tell you how we date ourselves. How many people remember the typewriter, right? See, you give these illustrations now, the teenagers don't even move. They, they don't even move. Because you say, typewriter? What's a typewriter? Who, a keyboard? But who uses a typewriter anymore, right? Nobody. I, I, anybody remember cassette tapes? Hey, I'll really date some, some of you. I got a hand back there. I got a big hand. Right away. I'll even go back further than that for some of you oldie goldies. How many remember eight-track tapes? Huh? Now look, 
we had it going on in our cars before you guys were bumping and thumping, you know. We had six by nine Jensen speakers in the back of our cars and we had it going on. We were rocking, baby, right? That's what we were doing. We were way ahead of y'all. Eight track, I can give an illustration now of an eight track tape or a cassette or a disc. Really, in, in fact, we still, we give ideas of things that doesn't exist, or we don't do anymore. Like we'll say, have you heard her latest record? How many of you bought a record lately? Okay, one, two. Nobody buys records anymore. How do you get your music now? Uh-uh, nobody's with me today. Y'all must be tired. How many, how, how many downloads of iTunes do we have in here? Huh? That's how you get your music, right? That's what you do. We're, we're, not in our day. We bought real records. You guys don't even know what real records are. They look like a black Frisbee. That's what you know. And for those of us, golden oldies, we bought the little 45s. Huh? And you know what was cool? You could stack them. Yeah, you could put your 10 favorite records on, and it automatically dropped down. And then it would be, there's Elvis, right? Boom, then the next one. There's, oh uh, boy, y'all don't even know Elvis. You don't know Elvis? Michael Jackson? You don't know the Doobie Brothers? Who do you guys know? Eagles? Anybody know anybody? Yeah, okay, golly. So we did our 45s. I'm trying to make a point here. And the oddity is I'm trying to make a point about the cross. All this stuff has gone away. Nobody does anything with it anymore. Nobody cares. But think about this. The cross is as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. Nothing changed. Nothing. Think about it. What an unbelievable thing that the cross has remained relevant throughout not a couple of decades, but centuries. Millenniums now are still experiencing the same call to the cross as they did in the day that Jesus hung on it. This morning as we talk about the journey of the cross, I want to take you a couple of ideas of why is the cross such a big deal? I mean, why is it so important? Because the world doesn't understand it. Why do we keep talking about this place of death? This place of crucifixion? Why do we keep talking about it? We should give up and move on to, why would we talk about the blood that was shed? Why would we do that? We would say, what a, what a gross story. And it's not that, it's a grand story. It is the story. It is the changing element. It's not about two pieces of wood. It's about the cross of, of that instrument that God gave his love towards us and forgave us as sinners. I want to talk to you this morning about this travel of the cross. And here's why you and I ought to be so grateful. I'm going to give you just some single words. You know what had Jesus had to experience before he went to the cross? He had to experience condemnation. Let me read it to you this morning in Luke's gospel, chapter, uh, chapter 22, I believe is where we're going to be. Then the men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy the one that hit you. Wow. And they, and they said many other insulting things to him. And at daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law. This is the religious people. And together Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, I, if, you, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? He said, you say that I am. And then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. The religious people could not stand it. Jesus took our condemnation. What does that mean? It means you and I are condemned by our sin. We're condemned. For all have sinned. Everybody in this room. You know, you know, we talk about diversity. Let me just tell you about uniformity. All of us are sinners. And I can go from every gender. I can go from every color. I can go from every religion. I can go from every background. Everybody, according to the Word of God, if you choose to believe it, every one of you in this room, from the pastor back, is a sinner. Because the Scripture says with clarity, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you know what else the Word of God says? That by that sin, we are declared unholy, unjust, unrighteous. So you know what? We're dirty. That's what sin really does. And it's a spiritual dirty. It's not dirt like on your hands. You can wash off simply with, a, with a, a good roll of soap on your hands in hot water. No, you're covered with sin by your actions. Guess what? Your mind is filled with filth. Your heart is filled with indifference. And you and I are sinners. 
Now that sounds like a negative thing. It is a negative thing. If you die in your sin, you cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. It is impossible. So what in the world are we going to do? That's the reason we ought to be in love with the Jesus of the cross. Because Jesus took our condemnation. You know what happened? He was condemned to death. You and I should have died. This should be a simple formula that God would say, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to let you into my heaven. I'm going to let you in. But you're going to have to die to get it. You're going to have to repent and say you're sorry. And I'm going to honor that and let you in. But that's not what he chose to do. He knew that that was not good enough to obtain real righteousness. So in order to put you in right standing with God, Jesus Christ took your condemnation. You and I condemned. You know, when people used to be uh, placed into uh, correction services in, in one of our states, they were condemned to a life of death or they were condemned to a life of 30 years of hard labor. They used the word condemn. The judge used to use the word in the courtroom, I now condemn you to serve this amount of time. I think we've straightened it up a little bit now because we don't like certain words. But the truth is, I don't know what it's like to go to prison. I don't want to know what it's like to go to prison, but I got to believe there'd be some real condemnation if I had to spend the next 30 years of my life in a jail cell. I don't want to be condemned. So I'm going to do my best not to break the law to do it. But watch this. I can't help my sin. I'm a sinner. I'm born under the Adamic nature. There's nothing I can do about it. And so God, out of his mercy and his grace, when we talk about grace, you know what grace is? Grace is unmerited favor. I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But I'm telling you today as we bring up these children and we stand them before you and these teenagers say, and we say, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. That's who you are. Well, let me just tell you, when it comes to your condemnation, he is a promise keeper, not a promise breaker. And, and as we talk about the cross, in fact, not only was it the religious folks, but even the secular mind. In John 19, 19, it says, Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. You may not know what that term means, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time, but this was, was somebody that literally was almost beaten to death. They called it the cat of nine tails. And what they did is about one and one and a half pieces, pieces of leather were placed on the end of a handle. And usually the thing was somewhere between two and three foot long. Of course, they didn't, have the, uh, they didn't have the certain things that we have today, but they took whatever sharp items that they could put on the end, whatever metal, whatever stone, whatever they could do. And, and here's what you need to understand. When people say that Jesus Christ was not a man's man, they don't know anything about the scripture. They've never read what happened to him that day. They hung him up and tied up his back so tight that when that, those uh, one and a half inch pieces of leather, they'd wrap all the way around his body. And they'd say that the centurion that, that was in charge of that was usually one of the strongest men in the legion. And as he would pull back, he would rip the flesh. That's what happened to Jesus. And you know why he did that? Because he was willing to be condemned for you and me. They did that 39 times. Because they believed the 40th time around would kill a man. Jesus now left bare open, headed towards the cross. Before we ever get to the cross, Jesus has already been condemned. But not only that, when we find out the words that really, of why is it so important, is the word cross itself. It's found in Scripture. You know, the, 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 this particular area, as we begin to learn about what happened uh, with Jesus just right after he was condemned. The Bible says in John 19, finally Pilate handed him over to be crucified. In our day, that word crucified would literally mean capital punishment. That, that's sort of what would now be the analogy of what we understand. We picked all kinds of ways throughout human history of what we thought was a, 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 a way to put a person to death. We've hung people, we've stoned people, we've medicated people. I mean, all kinds of things that occurred that, we've, that we have literally put people, that's called capital punishment, to death. And here in this, this particular time, the Romans used the crucifixion. They took a person's body, hung it up on a what? On a cross. Jesus Christ, it says here, carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which is in the Aramaic called Golgotha. And there they crucified him with him and two others, one on one side and one on the middle. 
When we talk about the journey, the travel that Jesus had to do, why in the world do we continue in church to make such a big deal out of the cross? Because it's the instrument that was selected to be freedom for us and death for him. Third word that I wanted you to see just for a moment this morning on this journey is the word wait. In John chapter, uh, excuse me, in Luke chapter 23, it says this, And Jesus was being led away. Some soldiers grabbed hold of him named Simon, who was from Cyrene. He was coming in from the fields, but they put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. You see, Jesus was going up of this street, this avenue, and it's called the Via Della Rosa. And actually, when you translate that little street, it was the way of sorrows or the way of suffering. And Jesus, knowing this, accepted this role anyway. And as he's making his way up the Via Della Rosa, I've been there. Several of you might have been there as well. It's, a very, it's one of those half steps as you try to make a way up the street sort of slightly elevated. And sometimes you can stumble when you're walking that kind of way. It's not a natural step. Jesus here now taking this cross. And he's pulling it after his body's been beaten almost to death. He doesn't have what's left in the strength or the energy to do this. But yet Jesus does it until he stumbles under the weight of the cross. But let me take that in a spiritual version. Think for a moment of the weightiness of your sin and mine. Think of the heaviness. Let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. Did Jesus for a moment think that the, that the really the episode was going to change? Did, did he think somehow he didn't know what was going on? No, he knew what was happening. And as they advanced themselves in prayer, that he told them to stop here. Pray, I got to go a little further. You sit here and do what's reasonable am amongst yourselves. You sit here and pray while I go to the next uh, area back here. And he made his way to a garden spot. Lo and behold, he found out they weren't praying. They fell asleep. Sounds like some of us in church, doesn't it? He just fell asleep. He was in the most urgent time of his life, taking on the condemnation, taking on the cross, and taking on the weight of what's going on, this heaviness. And he said, Father, if it be another way, if there's another way for this to occur, please remove, watch this, this cup from me. That weight, that cup, that, uh, that basically showing you in symbolism of, of him drinking up the, the sin of mankind. Think about all the stuff you've done. Think about it. You know, is it negative? Can you think about, you're in church today, let's be honest. Or can you think of the wrongs that you've done? Can you think of the evil that you've, that's been in your life? Can you think about the things you've said? Can you think about the way your attitude has been? Even lately, Jesus took that cup. He took that cup. And he drank. And you know what he did? He took on the weightiness of all of our sin. Why in the world should we be in love with the cross today? Because of the weight that came our way. But if that was not enough, the next word that I wanted you to see real quickly is the word stripped. Stripped here is basically the equal to shame. I know that some of us have been shamed all of our lives. I'm sorry for that. I really am. It really bothers me that, that some people have been treated so unfairly talked to in such a way some of you ladies in this room have been you've been talked to by your husbands by, that way I'm sorry no one should treat each other that way some of you have been done, treated that way by your parents you don't have the great story that some of us have that we had a mom and a dad that loved us and cared for us some of you had pe people that in your life that didn't invest back in you they, they didn't talk kindly to you. They didn't say proper words to you. They didn't help you become more. They tried to steer you to become less. I want you to know I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry that that's your story, but I want you to know you can't take that story and live in that blame and shame. You can't just keep on living there. Jesus gave his life for your shame. Jesus gave his life on the cross so that he could absorb all the shame in your life, all the things that you've done now, no matter how you got there. Maybe somebody did point you in the wrong direction. Maybe you could play some blame game, but I promise you the blame game is not going to get you to where you need to be. It's not going to get you to where you need to be. Our world today is filled with a no responsibility attitude. That's not my fault. This is what a teacher did to me. That's not my fault. 
This is what a coach did to me. Oh, it's not my fault. This is what my dad did to me. Some of you have been abused. I don't make light of it. And it's happened in your life, and you've got scars to prove it. Some of you have become, it's callous now, and your heart has become hard and indifferent. You know why? Because of the ugly that's happened in this world. And Jesus saw that ugly, and he gave his life to remove it. He will take and strip away. That's what they did to Jesus. They tried to humiliate him. The scripture says in Matthew 27, the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the praetorium and gathered the whole garrison around him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. You know what they're doing? They're mocking him. When they had twisted a crown of thorns on his head until it punched down into his skin and blood began to trickle down in his eyes and burn. Then they put a reed in his right hand and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him. They said, all hail the king of the Jews. And then they spat on him. I've never met a man that really would, would be enjoying when somebody spit in their face. In fact, the highest level of anger usually occurs when someone disrespects you to that kind of level. You know what you want to do? You want to get them back. You know what the flesh says? Get revenge. You know what the flesh says? Get even. You're a man. Be a man. And did Jesus do that? Nope. Then they struck, the, they took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the road off of him and kind of ripped off his back. And his already his blood now coagulating on the outside of his flesh and put his own clothes on him. And they led him away to be crucified. Why are we so adamant about the cross? Because Jesus took all of our shame on the cross. They stripped him. They intended to humiliate him. But he led right on down the way. And then the Bible uses the word nailed. In, John, in Luke's gospel, 23, 32, they took two criminals and they, led out to, they put them to death with Jesus. Now when the soldiers came to the place called the skull, that Golgotha, they nailed Jesus to a cross. Oh, by the way, I'll finish the rest of the scripture in a moment. There's no actual history that says every time they crucified somebody that they nailed them to a cross. Sometimes they did tie them up with leather bands. But the scripture is very clear that in between the hands, right in the bones, in order to keep him from ripping his hands off, they nailed him, both hands and feet. You know, I think about why we keep talking about the cross. Why we keep wearing a necklace around our, our necks. Why we continue to do artwork to remind us. It is to remind us of this instrument of love and mercy and grace and forgiveness and strength and authority and power. It is the cross that frees us up that we don't have to live like that anymore. Some of you can come out of darkness today. You can come out of blindness today because of the cross of Calvary. Then they nailed him to the cross. They nailed the two criminals to the cross. And then it said, Jesus said these words, just the opposite from what you and I would say. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That's who Jesus is today. Anybody ever met him? That's who Jesus is. Some of you came into this place and you've done it so many times. Some of you online, you think because of your life that God is out to get you. Listen, if that was the case, why in the world would God wait so long? Would he just have to wake up one day in May and decide he had enough strength to come get you? I find that hard to believe. If he is the creator God that, that we believe the word of God says he is, he could go get you anytime he wanted to. If God wanted to get you, he'd get you. But I'm going to tell you, he does want to get you. He wants to get you underneath the blood through the cross. He wants to get you underneath the saving grace. He wants to get you through a flow of mercy and forgiveness and love. And he wants to take you and make a brand new creature out of you. All the old junk in you, he wants to wash it away and make you clean. Man, isn't the cross a great story? It's a great story. Next word, and we'll wrap it up in a couple of words, is the word suffering. I don't like the word suffering. I, I want to eliminate suffering. I don't like it. You know what we do in this world? We, we try to make up for things and say, well, if we just won't suffer, then, you know, hey, uh, uh, maybe we'll do it that way. And we'll find all kinds of sort of anti-ways to do what God has said. But you can't eliminate suffering. You can't make this human life be perfect. You can't do it. Government can't do it. Businesses can't do it. 
Social clubs and organizations can't do it. Sports can't do it. You, you can't make it perfect. Life is filled with sorrow. And there's suffering all along the way. Look, you don't have to suffer every day. You don't have to have the world's worst life. You don't have to have any of that. But look, if you think that life is just going to be a piece of cake, you'll never have another problem, somebody sold you a bill of goods. And Jesus came to lighten your load. The, the scripture goes on to tell us in another place that he would take on his yoke. Let him get in the yoke with you. Now, we're not farmers. We're not agrarians most of us anymore. But you know what that meant? Is that if you put some other animal in the other yoke and you put them side by side, they could pull the plow or the wagon or whatever it was, do their equal work. And Jesus says, let me get in the yoke with you. You know why? Because I'll do all the pulling. The suffering that is set before you and me in John chapter 19 was there for you to understand why the cross is so important. And you don't have to suffer like that anymore. John 19, 26 says, Jesus, therefore, seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, said to his mother, woman, behold thy son. Jesus here is seen as the suffering servant. He is serving your life. This son of man that could have called down a, ho a host of angels selected not to. This, this son of God who could have called a, a legion beside him and warred over all the Romans and all the Greeks and every Gentile and, and all of the religious of that day, he could have overpowered them all. He chose not to. You know why? Because he was a big picture God. He's a big picture God. He saw the need for more than a kingdom in a moment. He saw the moment as just a moment. He said, I'm going to be the kingdom of a lifetime. And so Jesus gave his life for all the suffering. He gave it for the big picture. You're a part of the big picture. When you are sitting there right now, understand this. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was looking out through time, not controlled or captured by a watch or a clock. He saw you in need of forgiveness and redemption and a plan for your life. And it brings us to the final word, the word died. Jesus was not medicated on the cross. This is important theologically that you get this right. People at all times have had to try to talk us down off the cross. They've tried to sort of manipulate words at times. They've tried to soften it. But we can't soften what was done that day. Matthew 27, verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness all over the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood there when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and offered him to drink. The rest said, leave him alone, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two pieces from the top to the bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Jesus died, but it wasn't a death that was because he was conquered. Jesus died because he brought liberty to the captives. Jesus has set us free today. We must make much of the cross because God has saved our souls and placed our name in the Lamb's book of life. And one day, that someday, when we talk about heaven, we ought to get excited about it because Jesus has bought you a place. There he goes before you to prepare a place. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I'm telling you today that the cross is that instrument of life and liberty, and forgiveness, and freedom, and abundance. Ladies and gentlemen, we stand before you today to see that we cannot ever live in our church world or our private world without the cross that sets us free. I hope today that as we go through our lunch, I hope you won't leave because we're going to celebrate with our children, and we're going to remind them that it is the cross. Some of you have walked into this room with trouble. Some of you, are what your basket is full. Some of you are online. Listen, there's not much good you can talk about. 
Well, I want you to know whether you're here to celebrate or you're here today because you're hurting. Either way, the cross is the instrument of, of forgiveness and of grace and mercy. I'm going to ask you all over this room today to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I, if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life, whether you're online right now and you're in your automobile or you're sitting at your kitchen table or a cup of coffee on the back porch, whether you've been in church like a room like this a thousand times, doesn't matter. If it's never been real, this could be your day of real salvation and real forgiveness. You say, how do I do that? Well, with every head bowed, and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes all over this room and online as well. I'm going to lead you in something that we've entitled all through my life as the sinner's prayer. And it's a, it's a base prayer that says, I am willing and ready to repent of all that I've done. Please forgive me. Come live in my heart. Let me help you. It won't matter. Just say the words. You've got to mean it. That, that's what repentance is. I'm going to mean it. I'm going to turn away from the way. I'm going to let God's power turn me away. Are you ready? Heads bowed. You ready? Let's pray. Say something like this. Dear Jesus, just talk to him. Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I know that I need a Savior. Lord, I am sorry. Just say it to him. I am so sorry for the way that I've lived. I turn from that life. And I turn to the path of salvation and redemption. I repent of yesterday and move forward. Help me. Save me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Say those things to him. Jesus, come live in my heart. Change my life. Change my world. And the best way I know how, I begin to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody say amen. Let's give him praise this morning because it's always my belief that somebody every day, every, time, every Sunday, somebody's giving their heart to Christ. All right, we got some final instructions for you. I think Miss Denise is going to come help me again. But let me let me uh, do this today. I'll do a little I'll do a little children's business today. All right. How much is children's camp? You know, Miss Sarah. One hundred twenty. Anybody know exact amount? Is that am I, is that close? Anybody remember? I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it up five bucks. I'm gonna go one hundred twenty five because I think it's close. All right. Here's what we've got. We're gonna our goal is to raise, I want every child, you want every child that wants to go to camp, to go to camp. There's dollars not an issue. And you all are very generous. So I'm going to start. Now, here's what I'm going to be clear about before we give away something. I'm not talking about your tithe dollars. If you're ready to give as a tither, put it in the box over here, one in the back door, one in the back door. If you're online, give your tithe dollars to fbcmacomb.com. Are you got it? Look behind the seats. If you want to be a giver today, look behind the seats, take an envelope, put your cash, put your check, whatever you're doing, put it in there. If you're an online giver, fbcmacomb.com, you can find the giver button, okay? Now, now we're done with that. We got it? So you're going to give on your way out? That's normal. Now, if you want to take another envelope or if you're a check writer, I'm a check writer. I still use checks. I'm going to tell you if you have to use a second envelope, you can. On the back gives you information. All right, here's what I'm asking. I'm asking for, I think we need at least, what, 30 kids? All right, I'm going to bump it to 30 so we can invite some others. I want every kid to be able to go to camp, all right? So I'm going to start, and Cindy and I will start with number one, all right? So we need 29 more of you that will give above your tithe $125. And if you're willing to do that, I want you to raise your hand right now. I want to see how many I've got before we get in the room. All right, say one, two, three four five six i see anybody else? seven anybody else eight okay anybody else? nine and Any, that's ten okay anybody else i got a third of them right now anybody else okay 31 uh, uh, 11 i need 30 okay now the rest of this we got to raise over here so you got you're gonna get your free meal and we're not gonna let you go until we give this money all right so no i'm just kidding all right I need you guys, if you're ready to give that, I want you to give it today. I'm going to give mine today, and we're going to, have, we're going to get all this money taken care of. I think it's about 6000 bucks when it's all said and done of all the things we've got to have. We're going to raise that money, all of it. And by the way, when we get to uh, children, now we're children, when we get to teenagers, we're going to do the same thing for teenagers. Y'all are always very generous. We're going to help these kids go, you know, while the world is so um, difficult, we're going to help them. All right? Now, 
We have a winner of we 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 have got potato salad, don't we? We, we got have burgers, some delicious dogs, potato salad, potato salad, mm -hmm. homemade ice cream, homemade ice cream, vanilla, wow, <laughs> Butterfinger, okay, chocolate. So somebody made the best potato salad. Yes, we, we got have a, four got, winners. A four winners. We have four winners. All okay. right. So they collected all the potato salad. Miss Cindy had some taste testers in the kitchen. They had lined them all up, and they have determined four winners. Four winners. And so we're going to announce them ahead of time. So when you go into the fellowship hall, you can just claim your prize so number four is Hayden and Celine's grandmother oh, okay wow. that's number four there all right we go. Congratulations. third place goes to a youth a student what? I am just floored this is uh, hey adults you just better better get ready but Hayden Holmes is in third wow. place I want to taste that one yeah absolutely I want to taste absolutely. that absolutely all two. right Second place is a beautiful lady by the name of Sarah DeLong. Yay, Miss Second Sarah. place, look delicious. And number one, number one was looked like the most creative potato salad of all the ones, like it stood out the best, and um, is Mr. Andy Andres. Wow, look at here, Andy. Yes, number What's one, up? first place, first place. First so. place, I'm gonna taste that one too. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna taste. Has Andy. lots of onions in it. <laughs> all right, let's stand up and uh, we're gonna have a blessing. Well, and we we've recognize? got one other graduate yes. that was able to make it, and we are so honored. Anastasia's here now. Yes, come on, Anastasia. We're Anastasia. Come on up here. Do you mind if I read her bio? I would love for you to read her bio. I just know how proud we are of our kids, and we read her bio earlier because we did not want to leave her out, but um, I just know it's good for mom and the family just Let's to hear it. all of her accomplishments. I'm going to read her bio one more time. So Anastasia is the daughter of Miss Mildred Bates, and she graduated from North Pike High School this past Friday night. Uh, she has a passion for music, and she's going to be attending Southwest Community College this fall where she has received a full scholarship. Wow. Put your hands together. A full scholarship majoring in music music and cosmetology and archery is her pa second passion which she realized she loved during centrifuge camp and that's what y'all are investing in yep. today is sending some kids to camp and so she loves archery and North Pike came in first at the South State Championship so what an honor Anastasia's dream is to become a band director and band dire her band director has been such an inspiration to her since the sixth grade they have been her uh, mentors and Mr. Bolaware and Mr. Weaver have also made Made her keep her head up and told her to never give up. How many of you need that encouragement yeah. in your life, yeah. right? And she plans to, um, after Southwest, she plans to attend William Carey to con uh, continue her um, pursuit in a music degree. So Anastasia Bates. Thank you, Anastasia. So glad she's here. We have a Bible for you, so don't leave. Um, it disappeared off that table. Um, but you guys join us after church for hamburgers and hot dogs because it's going to be a great day. All right, we're going to make our way out. We're going over to the fellowship hall. It's all set up. Everything's all cooked. You don't have to wait. Costs nothing. All you got to do is show up. Family day with all of our family members. Let's pray. I'm going to bless the food while we're here, and we'll be ready to eat when we walk out. Father, thank you for a great day, and the Lord, thank you for Anastasia today. I thank you that uh, we're able to recognize her along with the other graduates, bless her and her home and family. Thank you for the food that's been prepared. All these behind the scenes have been working so hard. I just thank you for Rebecca and her leadership over our children's ministry. I pray, God, that we'll have a great time of lunch. Thank you for the monies that are given for all these kids so they can go to children's camp and ultimately vacation Bible school, then youth camp for all of our students. We're just blessed that summer's right around the corner. Bless our time in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you soon. Come to lunch.